It's about to go down with Mark and Kathy. A live coaching show about dropping ideas. Mark and Kathy coach and have conversations with brilliant idea creators who are reimagining the world through the expression of their words, thoughts, and actions. Hello, everybody, and welcome to It's About to Go Down with Mark and Kathy. I'm your good friend, Mark Williams. This is our good friend, Kathy Armias, and we are joined today by the man you have to meet, our featured friend today, Mr. Lou Raja, who is ready to drop an idea that we all need to hear, that the entire world needs to hear about roots and wings. Lou, I can't wait to hear the idea that you want to share and how we can help you to evolve this idea even further so we can reach more audiences, so we can touch more lives, and so that we can have a greater impact. So, Lou, can you start off by telling us a little bit about roots and wings? Yes. Um, thank you so much for having me, Mark. I really appreciate this. Kathy Armias, thank you for having me. Uh, roots and wings. Um, it's a concept of what anchors us in this crazy changing world. Uh, what is it about us that remains the same? What is fundamentally us? What is our core essence? What are our values, our North Star, if you will? Uh, who we really about? So the metaphor of roots is really being anchored and being uh, true to yourself, understanding yourself and owning who you are. And then of course, the metaphor of wings is about stretching. It's about going outside of your comfort zone. It's about uh, pushing the envelope. It's about not being satisfied on whatever outcome and result that you have and you continuously grow. So to me, this duality, this concept of roots and wings is really much weaved in my own life. Uh, Africa, growing up in the Congo, uh, Africa has given me my roots. So what I believe, the love for family, my connection with people, my connection to the earth, uh, my connection to my ancestors, it's all from my upbringing in Africa. But then I came to America at age 17, and stretch my wings. America was more about opportunities, uh, pushing myself, going beyond my limits, starting my own business, pursue freedom. So this dual concept of roots and wings, Africa provided my anchor and America provided an opportunity to stretch. But uh, working with the legendary Kathy or me as my coach, when we talked about roots and wings, she really challenged me on making it universal. The idea mm -hmm. was, how does it relate to anyone, no matter where they come from? And that's where we landed on roots are who you are, wings are who you can become. And so the concept now can resonate with just about anybody uh, because they can think about what makes them them, what makes them unique, but then they can also think about how they can stretch and become more. So that's the concept of Roots and Wings. Yeah, and full disclosure, Lou, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Thanks for explaining that so well. Full disclosure, Lou gave a TED, TED talk on this. He gave a TEDx talk on this a few years ago. And um, when I first met Lou uh, 10 years ago, he, one of the first things I remember him telling me, he's like, I'm working on a book that's called Africa, My Roots and America, My Wings. And when he explained it to me, I was Ooh. like, wow, what a great concept. Um, and as it's so funny to see um, the life of an idea too, how something can sit dormant for a long time, not really even dormant, just like it sits there and it's a part of your life. And then it becomes so much a part of your life that you actually have to share it with other people. And that's kind of the space that Lou's in. And so today, I think Mark, where our job is to help him do like version two, three, four, you know, like let's take it further, right? Nice. 
Yeah. And I love yeah. this. So I'm just going to start with this right here. I think the number one thing, I like everybody that we're talking to, they already are living, breathing, expressing great ideas. Lou is a phenomenal speaker. If you just type Lou Raja into Google, you'll find a plethora of things. So Lou is no, Lou's no rookie here. Lou's amazing. <laughs> um, but any great person that expresses ideas, you know, has to grow them and cultivate them. And so, um, Lou, thanks for, like, thanks for sharing your time with us today and doing that with us. I think the first place to start is like, how do we make this even more universal? Like it already has the universality to it right now when saying like, who, what are your roots? What are your wings? But I think the biggest challenge is like, how do we really make that universal? How can a kid in Tokyo right now go, mm. oh my gosh, I really want to think about my roots. And then like, I really want, like, in fact, Lou, I think you've won. If a teenager can watch your talk or listen to you talk <laughs> about this and they're like, I want to, you know, grasp onto my roots and I really want to figure out my, what my wings are. So I think we need to really start there is how can we, like, how can we make this even more universal than it is? Like, how can we make it attractable and appealable that people, don't just hear it and go, that makes a lot of sense, but they hear it and they go, no, I, I want to go back to my roots and I want to find out what my wings are. Cause right now I'm just operating. I'm not really consciously thinking about my roots and I'm not really consciously thinking about my wings. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. And there is definitely uh, intentionality around it. Um, for me to really understand the depth of my roots and also the stretch in my wings, I had to really pause and do a lot of introspection and look within and understand what makes me who I am. So anybody uh, that's thinking about their geographical background, they think about the people that have influenced them, whether it's family, society, wherever they are, when they think about the values that they hold dear, and what that represents to them, right? And, and so they, they can start to shape and understand kind of what anchors them, almost like their, their uh, fingerprint, their soul fingerprint, right? It's like who they really are. And then, of course, if they're like you, Mark, if they're like you, Kathy, they will not be satisfied. They will want more. <laughs> right? they, they will want to stretch. They will not be complacent where they are. And so the idea would be, how do we then intentionally spread our wings? How do we go outside of our comfort zone? So then for me, uh, that, that became a real opportunity to create a better version of myself. Um, how do I outperform yesterday every day? That, be, that becomes like a, a growth mindset obsession uh, on mm. how to push yourself, how to be better, and how to keep pushing the envelope. So anyone can relate to it. Anyone that has a big goal, anyone that has dreams. And even here in the U.S., when we're talking about you know, how to make it scale, you know, that's why I'm excited about your feedback or your feed forward. He's always dropping nuggets, dropping nuggets. Right? <laughs> to make it scale, I'm thinking about, I mean, this, this country, I mean, the, the very narrative about America, uh, outside of our Native American brothers and sisters, all of us have roots elsewhere. Every single one of us, uh, mm -hmm. we came from somewhere else. So we can always identify geographically of how that impacted us. But then even within, you think about where you grew up, you think about how you grew up. Those are all the stories that are built in and then how you push yourself forward. My question to you, Mark, my question to you, Kathy, is really around scalability. How do I apply this concept uh, you know, at work? How do I apply this concept as a coach? How do I apply this concept in a community? How do I apply this concept in, 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 in writing a book about it, right? Or even a program on a how-to roadmap, how to find your roots and how to find your wings, right? Those are the areas where I'm scratching my head and uh, looking forward to your guidance. Well, well let me ask you this, and, and let's take it piece by piece. The first one I heard you say was work. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. 
when you talk about this concept of roots and wings, mm -hmm. what compels you? What is it about the work community that compels you to give them this message? Yeah, I, I appreciate it. The, to me, the work is uh, a company's culture, right? Mm -hmm. A company's DNA, right? The people. Uh, because if you ask anyone from CEOs to executives or even just the general staff, what, describe your DNA. How do you do things at such and such company or such and such firm? That, to me, speaks to the company's roots. Uh, so not mm. just the history, but how they go about doing their business, right? So that, to me, it speaks to the culture, it speaks to how they go about their business, it speaks to their history, it speaks to uh, who they really are, right? Their brand, how they mm. show up. And then, of course, when you're talking about wings to a company, we're talking about growth. We're talking about profitability. Mm. We're talking about scaling. We're talking about expanding, right? So that's where I see the concept still be applicable to a company. You know, I think, Lou, um, I, I think I'd love, in order to scale it, I think that the, probably the first thing that needs to do is, is come back, no, no pun intended here, but come back, back to the roots of, of this concept and um, don't make definitions for it like for instance on the on the scalability it doesn't always have to be the growth of a company as far as like like we can add parameters but why don't we allow the fluidness of it for instance I know Lou that you've talked about this before many times when people think about their roots they think about where they've come from their background but they shy away from the bad parts and the bad parts, mm -hmm. anything negative also makes you who you are in a really powerful way, actually. Because many times it's a, it's a complete 180, like something happened to you when you were young, mm -hmm. something happened in your childhood, you don't do that to your children, you almost do a complete 180. So it's maybe this, this permission of like, because I think you really have to sell the concept first. And then people kind of self-apply it themselves, but they really have to like strongly feel, it can't just be like a, yeah, I get that. It has to be more like, oh my God, I never really thought about mm. taking my roots, taking all the good, the bad, the indifferent, even actually taking a look. Many times people don't look behind them, you know? They move forward, they move forward, they move forward. They want to ignore what is behind them. So I think it's, I would start there. I would really, really start there to say, you can't even talk about wings until you actually know what your roots are. Ask anybody on the street, tell me what your roots are. You will get a, you'll get a wide variety of answers, but you'll probably get a really shallow answer from most people. Yeah. And so there's that's... not really that depth in, in that. Mm. So yeah, I think it needs to, I, I feel like it needs to start there because before they buy into the system, they really, really have to understand that it's, it's a simple but powerful concept, but they really have to understand both sides of it. No, that, that, makes, that makes perfect sense to go deeper uh, in understanding, you know, what roots are and what they represent. And then, you, you know, you touch on some of the not so uh, uh, flattering uh, aspects of mm. our roots, right? Um, and how to navigate that. And the, the best thing for me um, growing up in the Congo with my father was always about how to turn adversity into advantage. Um, mm -hmm. uh, how to use whatever happened to you uh, for you, if you will. In other words, how do you turn that around so that you can literally take the message from it and leave the mess? <laughs> um, and, mm -hmm. and, and so that was always the challenge. And I think, uh, Kathy, to your point, is really taking a holistic look of, again, as you mentioned, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the ugly, and how all of that has shaped who you are. And, and, and I believe you, you're absolutely right, because the deeper people go uh, on it, the, the easier it is for them to actually see how it applies in different areas of their lives. And, and in Africa, we say, you know, a tree is only as tall or as strong as the roots that go deeper in the ground, right? So that, that's a, 
That's a very powerful point. By the way, are you are you record, recording this? Because I, <laughs> I, I need the notes. You're not taking notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, shame. I, 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 shame. Right, right. You know what? So, <laughs> I'm gonna need Lou, the notes. you are you are episode one of our "It's About to Go Down" show, and this is amazing. Not only are we recording it, but the whole world is going to see this. So they're oh, gonna yeah. they, they are gonna get hit with your awesome concept. Well, I need Lou, it for like I, study. I got to for you <laughs> we, we we got the recording for you Lou, and and, and i take plenty of notes I, I i'll share any notes that you want I, I write a lot i have a question for you lou you said something and, and we've heard this line before right creating a message out of your mess and leaving the mess behind as a matter of fact you used those words just a few minutes ago yes i'm challenging you mm -hmm. to flip that mm -hmm. because it goes back to what kathy was saying earlier there's this, there's this idea that we're always pushing people to look forward. We're always pushing people to flap their wings, if you will. Mm -hmm. We're always kind of trying to move forward and leave what was behind. Mm -hmm. But what I heard you say that's a little bit different mm -hmm. is acknowledging, like not leaving the mess behind. You yeah. always have to be aware of what the mess was, right? Even yeah. when you talk about these companies mm -hmm. the whole, whole idea about profit and growth and i agree with kathy you don't need to go into all of that you need to go into the concept but what i heard you say is that in order to even think about growth and profit and all the marketability and all of that you have to understand i like the way you said this make sure you write this down the dna of the culture mm -hmm. why is it so important for us to understand the roots of our company why is it so important to understand the roots of our team, the roots of our organization, the roots of our school, the roots of our family? We need to really dig into that. We always hear about fast forward. We don't often hear enough about embracing the roots or the past. So I really think it would, it would benefit your message and scale it even more by taking on that particular concept because it's so different from what we always hear. Well, and what about this, Lou? Because now you're like, I start, I start thinking about my kids, your kids, Mark's kids. You know, we, when, when you said families, Mark, it really hit me. It's like one of the things that we try to do, but I don't think we do it super consciously all the time is if we can establish in our own family, like what are our roots? Where did you tell you, you look at your kid and you said, this is, this is where you were born. This is, this is the love that we shared. And you know, you're giving them the roots, but what about other people's roots? Like, what about, what about showing that concept to every, every single person that they look at, every single company and organization that they look at or any, every other family, like mm -hmm. to look at people and go, oh, I wonder what their roots are and be curious. I mean, I think the world needs more of that too, just in general, like that's a really good thing is to really try to understand what makes somebody who they are. What's that depth? We only look at what we believe to be, we make a quick judgment on people on the surface. So we can do a lot of internal work, but I also think it's a good Good, it's a good filter to use with the world. And so, you know, maybe that's another, you know, uh, I always talk about ideas being really wide and really deep. Why mm -hmm. being get as many people into this as possible, many, as many people as possible to understand and be able to apply the idea. And then also the depth that we're talking about, but the width could be like also flipping it to outside of yourself. So this is not only about roots and wings with you, it's roots and wings. What's the potential too with other, with other people that you know? I, I like it because it expands and the web gets bigger and bigger when you add more people to the tribe as well. And uh, I think when you learn from one another, um, coming from an oral tradition background um, in Africa, uh, it, you know, the premium was always on, you know, uh, stories and, and people's essence and character and integrity. So, um, you know, your grandpa, your grandma, your, your parents, they're like walking libraries, right? Because, you know, we didn't have Ooh. books or things like that. So it was all into someone's head and into someone's heart. And they Ooh. were able to share uh, and tell you stories about who you are. So I feel like, you know, the, the African tradition or the Congolese tradition really helped me with this. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like I had a... a, a an easier task to embrace my roots because it was built in, in the culture. 
uh, it was built in in the essence of who we are. And so that's why I, I like your coaching here because here in a, in a fast paced society like America, in a, in a society that says go, 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 in a society that's, that's all about growth and, 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 and challenging the, the status quo and it's very individualistic, I, 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 I mean, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't see WePad, you see iPad, you don't see, you know, <laughs> you know WeMad, you true, see iMad. So, so how, how to package that to be so intentional about uh, the process that mm -hmm. it takes to actually find out about your roots. And, and, and so that's a very, that's a very good point. And then of course, um, adding uh, people's uh, perspective to that web conversation on roots. I feel can be uh, super enriching, and uh, never thought about it that way. So that's that's very that's very uh, on point. Appreciate that, Lou. Um, I'm going to ask you a tough question here. You ready? You standing up for this one? I'm ready. I'm ready. Bring it, Mark. How do you know it works? Mm. How do you know? How do you know embracing your roots really works? I appreciate that question. Uh, I really do. Coming to America, everything was foreign to me, okay? Mark, imagine you are in a country where you don't even speak the language. You're in a country where you don't understand the culture. You're in a country where you look different <laughs> than most people. Uh, you have a different name. You wear crazy clothes. Uh, it's really easy to get, you know... Uh, out of place, to feel insecure, uh, to doubt yourself. And if it wasn't for my roots, if it wasn't for the voice of my father, the voice of my mother, the voice of my grandpa, the voice of my grandma, anchoring who I was, this changing world could have been overwhelming for me to take. Absolutely could have been overwhelming for me to take. Because if you don't, if you're not anchored and you don't, re you don't really know who you are, it's easy to go with the wind. The wind can take you left. The wind can take you right. And so it works because mm. I felt so anchored in this changing environment and could still uh, feel uh, sure of myself uh, in, in, in a new land. So that was testament to again, having strong roots that my parents and community instilled in me. So I know for a fact that the person that knows who they are can navigate any situation. The person that does not can blow with the wind. And when you say the person who knows who they are, mm -hmm. do you mean the person who knows where they've come from? Yes, and have embraced their roots uh, because they're anchored. Um, there's one thing about knowing there's another thing about owning, uh, and then there's another thing about sharing, right? These are all levels of root conversation, roots conversation, right? Knowing your history, Ooh. owning your history, sharing your history. These are all the levels of uh, digging into your roots, for sure. All right, now I don't know if you've ever used this before, and Kathy, you know, because you've had so many conversations. Have it, it, this term, roots conversations, have you used that term before? We got to write that one down. We got to like write, write that one down. We got to write that one down. I have it. Yes, yes, I, yes. Yeah. And, and the way you broke it down, because I could just see family conversations. I could see company conversations. You're talking about scaling. I can see this, this footprint that you created, footprint, right? Um, knowing, owning, sharing. That's such an, an, an interesting step-by-step -step footprint of getting people to wrap like a roots conversation yes. so that they can understand their background before they can launch forward. Oh my Ooh. God, Mark, I love that. Yeah, awesome. I, got, I gotta write that one <laughs> <laughs> down. I gotta write that one down and uh, that's awesome, thank you.
Well, you know, uh, to that question, Mark, that it, I love that you asked the tough questions. And I think that's really good part of, you know, the coaching process is asking people those questions because you do need to be a, in order. And Lou wants to scale, right? And in order to be able to scale, um, I can personally vouch for Lou because I've seen the work he's done with people um, in his life. But I know personally for me too, I'll never forget um, this one this one thing that Lou told me one time we were in downtown Portland, we were just sitting and having lunch. Lou probably remembers this day. And he just said, you know, Kathy, why do you, why do you try to run so far from your past? Like, why do you try to, why are you always trying to like, why are you always trying to get as far away from your past as you can? Why don't you run at it? Because I just want you to just like, take a look at this moment at this time, look at all your characteristics, look at everything that you do, your, your extreme competitiveness, your passion, your like everything that you are, where the hell do you think that comes from? Like, <laughs> and, then, and then he actually even gave me this visual. He goes, you see, see a lot of these people walking around right here. You can tell that they don't know their purpose. Like look around and see a lot of people. They get up, they go to work, they come home, they watch TV, they get up, they go to work that, you know, and he really gave me a point that I never forgot, Lou. I, that conversation was a very long time ago and I never forgot it. And it really made me not feel self-conscious about things that happened in the past, but it really did. It was a roots conversation, but we didn't call it that. It was a roots <laughs> conversation. I love that, Mark, that you pulled that out. Like having the concept and being able to talk to people, Lou, about that and, and say, this is what a roots conversation looks like mm -hmm. is a really conceptual and easy way for people to understand what you're, you know, what you're trying to do. And I just want to say one thing about the growth. I really absolutely quick. love it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's so good. One thing about the growth really quick too. Um, I think that there, I love this ability um, to allow people to take your concept and you can give them, you can almost shine a light out there and say, these are all the possibilities, but to allow people to like choose their own path. And I think like, for instance, with an organization, um, organizations many times focus on profitability, but you know, we actually know that the companies that really, really work hard on culture, the profit comes with it. So just don't tell anybody what they need to do in order to, to fix it. Just let them kind of let them figure that out. Cause for one company, it may be to go strong on the culture for another, it might be something else. And so just, you know, know that the wings are whatever it, takes to so the wings conversation over here right this is roots conversation, the wings conversation <laughs> well, i like that i like is that the opposite side is the wings conversation what what is it going to take for them to fly what will you know what will it take for them to lift off so yeah Ooh. but mark i think you should talk to and you're good at this, Mark. Write them, um, write them, write them. Yeah. I gotta take these. Mark, have, have you ever seen Mark's these. head down? And I said he, take this. He's just writing, writing, writing. Um, Mark, you're really good at this, but I think, you know, talking about the scalability, you know, what are your thoughts on, uh, Lou wants to, Lou gave a TED talk on this. Lou's very well known um, mm -hmm. in the world. Like anybody who knows Lou knows how genius he is. Uh, he, you know, he has a lot of exposure in this in this world, and probably many people hear him talk about many things. But if if he were to hone in on this one thing, how do we help him scale this? And what what's his best avenue? Like we should kind of chat about that for a sec. Ooh, uh, by best avenue, you're talking about the 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 best target group. <laughs> Maybe the group, maybe the medium the in which he gets it out. Too? The, the group, hmm. maybe the, the mediums too. Like what's his best, you know, one of the, the, for the, the best thing to kill an idea sometimes is to water it down and try to do too much with it. So sometimes you have to have a concentrated effort in one area. That's why some people work really hard on a book. And then once the book does really well, then they hmm. create off of that. Um, yeah, just thinking about Lou, he has a lot of exposure. He speaks to a lot of groups. He's in a lot of people's ears, but what's the best way for him to um, integrate this roots and wings idea? Um, what's the best way to build it and scale it? I mean, that's, I think that's why, wow. I think that's why Lou's here today. That's a really that. good question. That's a really good question. There are, as, as we talk about this, two things keep coming back to me. And I know we talked a lot about companies, but the, the two things that kept coming to me, first of all, was always family. 
Mm -hmm. right? You even got me thinking, Lou, about have I had those rude conversations with my own children, right? Yes. Um, and, and how much do the, the, the how much does the younger generation of my family know their roots? And why is that so important, right? I think about things that I've already learned recently about the roots of my family that I didn't know that mm -hmm. have now inspired me mm -hmm. to now take things to the next level. Yeah. So I, I do wonder how addressing this to the, to, you know, that family generation, but I kind of still feel that that might be too broad, but, but I think about as a parent and, and, and child, always thinking about the future. I can, I can see you going into, into schools and talking to kids about this, um, but maybe it's more of a parent conversation. That's one thing that I've been thinking about. I want to, I want to share with you something else I, I, I was thinking about. And then I, I love to collect your thoughts. Uh, you know, clearly your thoughts, Lou, and, and Kathy's thoughts. I keep thinking about the climate we're living in right now, right? Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot going yeah. on in the world that, yeah. that has really made the world very divisive, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And something that you have come back to a number of times is this idea, you said it really well at the beginning, about how there's this common thread, mm -hmm. something that ties us all together. Ultimately, mm -hmm. what I heard is that if you take every leaf on the tree mm -hmm. and, and go down, go, mm -hmm. go, go down all the way, yes. through, you will find that there's a connectivity. Yes. And I wonder in this climate, whether you talk about political divisions, cultural mm -hmm. divisions, racial divisions, mm -hmm. where is the potential to mm -hmm. speak to that in terms of let's have a roots conversation about what's going on in the climate of the world today to see how we can take these wings in a direction where we can all fly in. I think I might have gone really far with that metaphor right there. Oh, I like it though. <laughs> I like it. I was with you. I was with you. I was with you in all of it. Uh, you know, I, but it I, makes it it makes it real timely. So I'd yeah. love to hear your thoughts about the timeliness of this. Mm -hmm very universal, your very universally needed message. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, three layers here. Um, the first one I have noticed um, just in our conversations uh, in society at large, people are craving to know more about their roots. There is a movement out there, whether it's 23andMe, whether it's AfricanAncestry.com, whether it's Ancestry.com. These businesses have blown up because of people's desire to want to know, because of people's desire to want to connect with who they are and understanding their lineage and the, the tribe they came from, the ethnic group, the country, the region, right? That is proof that there is a thirst for knowledge and connection to one's roots. And so that, that to me is the first layer that shows me, you know, it's like the data that proves that people actually care about this. Uh, and and, and, and that's, that's a big one. Second, you mentioned, you know, kind of that common thread. Uh, to me, and I've used the Ubuntu word as, as often as possible, that is our common humanity, right? When you can connect the dots, as you mentioned, from the leaves to the roots, uh, it's that same continuum that, that, that links it. And I think right now, when uh, you're seeing all the division, it's almost, a, it's almost as if, it's almost as if um, a leaf on, on one side of the tree is complaining about a fruit on the other side of the tree, not understanding they're part of the same tree, <laughs> right? So I think Ubuntu, our common humanity, when you're able to go deep with people and find mm -hmm. commonality, and then when you're able to go high with people and still find commonalities, I feel like that will definitely uh, touch to that point. And then the third is family. You mentioned family. I couldn't agree more. I think that's that's the best place to start this conversation. I can see uh, mm -hmm. kitchen, kitchen room, uh, kitchen table or uh, living room table, just having a conversation 
and mm -hmm. maybe we can provide them with prompt questions or yeah. process or uh, hell, an app, I don't know, uh, just to, <laughs> to get, conversations. That, <laughs> get that conversation going. So anyway, those are the three, the three places. The top was the data. Uh, the second was Ubuntu connecting all of us. And then the third is starting as, as a nucleus from the family perspective. Well, Lou, this is going to be a little bit more of a, a deep dive as opposed to like, here's how you scale. But one of the things I'm glad that you mentioned is you, you're right. Everybody's into this 23andMe and, you know, Ancestry.com and trying to find out your roots. And you are so right. And you know, the number one thing that you hear when somebody finds out their test, what do you always hear? I had no idea I was this or I was part this or part that. So maybe that's a place to start too is, is like many times, even when we think we know our roots, we don't actually. So unless we actually go digging, we don't really, we don't really know. I mean, anybody who has their parents living right now should be having conversations with their parents about things that they won't be able to get out of their parents when they're gone. Simple questions like simple questions that you take for granted right now because you assume that you always have that knowledge available to you and you don't. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's part of that root that see that roots conversation. I, I love that Mark because it can go, it can, it's so simple, but it can go so deep by just a couple of questions like that. So I, I, I like this of finding out something you didn't know. Absolutely. And I, I would, I would like for, for me to be able to create a few buckets around the roots, right? Yep. You have a geographical bucket. That's an yep. easy one, right? Right. You, you got kind of a lineage DNA bucket. That's another uh, straightforward. And then you also have um, your, um, the people that have influenced you the most, it, you know, your environment, if you yep. will, whether it's, your family, whether it's uh, the neighborhood you grew up and all that good stuff. And then you have another bucket that's about your experience, good, bad, and ugly, as Kathy brought up earlier, right? <laughs> what actually happened that shaped you? What are some of these significant moments? Like if you were to take your life and break it down in five-year increments and, mm. and to dig deep into what happened in those five-year increments that you can relate to in terms of what anchored you, what shaped you, uh, maybe it was something significant, maybe it was something that was emotional, maybe it was trauma, maybe it was an adverse uh, childhood experience. So there's like an experience bucket. Um, and then another one could be um, just, you know, values, you know, uh, some of yeah. the things that you learned from people and some of the things that uh, you're holding on. So these different buckets can be under the root umbrella so that people can find kind of a process uh, through them. And then that would, I believe, anchor them even more on understanding uh, yesterday. That's Hold so on. Good. I'm processing. I'm processing something. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold if you have Mark not talking, that's like a really good thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> a couple of conversations that I've had with aunts and uncles over the last couple of years. I was that kid who didn't ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I was that kid who didn't listen to a lot of the things that were being shared around the table. Mm -hmm. But you're right. A lot of the things that were shared around the table at one point are the same things that are shared through the 23s and me's, right? Right. The region. Right. The part of the world. Yeah. The lineage. You found out that you were 23% Turkish, whatever the case may be. But I think about the conversations that have recently been had with aunts and uncles who started bringing up names and making connections and telling stories. They were telling stories that I felt like, wait a minute, I got to write that down. Like, I can remember I'm 23% Turkish. I'm not, but I can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the stories that shape us. And when you said earlier, when you go back to the Congo and you think about a, an oral tradition, yeah. right? And the oral tradition is passing down, not just the family heritage, but the family, I'm gonna use your word, the family experiences, the family moments, the family stories. There's, I believe, a breakdown in, in families right now. 
especially in America, probably, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, dare, I, dare I say that, right? Mm-hmm. Kids are, are, are playing on their switches and the Instagram, and, and at the dinner table, mom and dad have got the, the cell phone right by their side. And, and I wonder how many families are having these roots conversations mm-hmm. and how that might impact family values and family future. And so you just spoke very deeply to me, not only as a, 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 a another, a, you know, a next generation and a future generation speaking to generation beyond generation, but I just think there's something powerful here to embracing your message about how you can revitalize mm. the family. Ooh, I'm going to call mm. it the family tree. I keep going with the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, such a, it's such an apropos. Let's go. Metaphor. Let's it's so go. Good. I love it. I love it. Let's go with it. Yes, absolutely. You know, I'm going to sum up what you both said together, because if you were to actually, a uh, great observation, Mark, because if you were to actually sum up what Lou said, those are the root stories are the ones that will stick more than anything. Like my Nana, I remember my Nana, uh, she was my great grandmother. We used to go to her house. She's like four foot two, you know, cute little round, pudgy Italian woman, always grabbing my cheeks and telling me I don't eat enough and my mom doesn't feed me. And, but the experience that I remember having the story is A, her entire living room was plastic furniture. She loved her furniture so much. She put the plastic on it, you know? Um, And she laid out, she would buy brand new, like, sheets and she would make she would make her raviolis by hand and stuff and so this is a piece that i don't even know my kids know it's just a little story it's not a big story but is it is it a story is it a root story that my kids know that's how italian she was she like made rolled her own raviolis you know (laughs) so i think that um you know lou you have so many beautiful stories with your dad in the congo and uh and lou's favorite thing to talk about is mangoes like how much he loves mangoes so okay i'm sure this is a a root story that your kids already know about because they already know how much you love mangoes but what are the what are the non-mango stories that they don't know about like that's right that they need to find. Yeah, so I love I this, uh, root conversations, root stories, because we all know that stories stick better than anything. So maybe, Lou, what you do is you're in this process, whether it's a family, an individual, an organization, whatever it is, um, a group of people, you're trying to help them find their root stories too by looking into the root, you know, the root buckets, the root conversation yeah. buckets. And then they're like, what are, what are actually the stories though? Like what made you think about the way you did, what made you view yourself the way you did when you were a child? Uh, what, what connection do you have with your 23% Turkish roots? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, what do you know about you? Like, you know, and you know, that might be a question. What do you know about, what do you know about you? What do you know about your grandmother? What do you know about your uh, coworker? What do you know about, those are, root. that's a root, that's a root question. So yes. I love that. Gathering the yes. stories. I, I, and then, I love and that. And then may I say this also, mm-hmm. to, to, to build up what Kathy just said, then to not only have everybody, family member, team member, coworker, whomever, to share those root stories, but eventually the next level is to find the connection between the root stories. Yeah. yeah. That's how you bring everybody together. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been a challenge because now, you know, my wife and I were blessed to have two boys, 13 and seven, and they're born in America. And this is their, uh, generation. This is their, uh, this, this is where they're literally building new roots, if you will. Mm. Right. And, and so it's interesting you know, a few years back when we took him to the Congo, you know, it was another level of education of how deep their roots go, right? And so having them navigate that. So our job as parents, my wife and I, is just to plant little seeds here and there and tell them as many stories as Kathy brought up so that hopefully, you know, it's doing something in there and <laughs> uh, and it will, it will come out. But again, it's it's always it's always the the challenge of, you know, what you pass on to the next generation. And we're really in the middle of that as we speak, how we navigate the culture that we're in and, and make sure we're setting them up for success. 
And, 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 and one of the best way to do that is to make sure they know who they are. So even their names, you know, uh, the oldest one is named Yenga and the youngest one is named Senda. So that conversation alone, because all their friends are like, uh, what does Yenga mean? Or that's a weird name or what does Senda mean? So that alone creates yeah. the conversation on mm. route. And uh, so you just build on that. And so, yeah, that's been, I guess, both the challenge and the opportunity. Well, Lou, I think that also about, you know, um, how do you, so I think we've cultivated this and this is a really great idea as to like, you know, thinking about how to, how to give this concept to people. Uh, you know, you know me, I'm going to talk about consistency, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's coming, you know, if you have a conversation with me, we're going to talk about consistency. Yeah. But I think getting it out into the world right now, one of the things that you can do is um, the more people that start thinking about the roots, I think you need to keep asking the roots questions and then clarify it. Like maybe start right now, just start it and use this as your like, maybe use it as in the lab. This is kind of the, like you're in the lab thing to see what sticks and what goes. But start putting it out to social media and start asking the question or whatever. Start saying like, hey, you know, I always talk about, if you watch my TED talk, you know, I talk about roots and wings. Um, here's some roots questions. Here, what are your roots stories? And oh my God, you'll get some beautiful stuff, but you also, then you consistently have that one little drop on people's mind, then drop another thing, drop another thing. I would, I would stay in the roots area for a while and, and kind of cultivate that and see, cause you know, if you look at underneath a tree, what are you going to see? You see a lot of like intermingled yeah. roots. Don't just yeah. go like this. Yeah. It's We're messy like, down there. It's messy. It's, it's all... crazy, right? Yeah. It's craziness. There's so much going on. Yeah. Um, so I think in order to, to get it out there, um, I don't think we could just stand here and say, oh, you should definitely write a book. I think you should do some social research. I think you should have people inspired. Don't, you know, and people follow you like crazy, Lou. Like everybody loves, everybody loves Lou. Like Lou, Lou has a great presence out in the world. And people, <laughs> when you write something, you're always very thoughtful in what you put out there. And in the midst of some really challenging times, you always have wise words to say. Um, so maybe you can go back and, and just say, hey, you know, a lot of what I think about you know, is about roots. And so kind of start having these conversations and then you'll see what comes, like it will lead you to the next place. It'll lead you to the next, because maybe it's to ha start having little conversations with people um, that you can record or something and you start gathering, you start looking at a whole array of all kinds of different people and you start gathering the roots and then you're always, like Mark said, looking for that connection. Right. What what's that one thing that goes back to their their humanity and stuff? Anyway, I, I feel like you need to be in the the lab a little bit with that. But there, it's it's gorgeous. Like there's so I just wouldn't want you to go one direction mm -hmm. and not have like done the the groundwork because it's so powerful. You can't afford to go too far in the wrong direction. Yes, I love the way you think, Kathy. I you know you know I love the way you think. And the, the whole idea of consistency also is a, is, is a conversation about starting conversations. And as you take on this idea that Kathy is sharing about putting this out there in your lab, right? And using right. your social media presence and, and dropping these, not just root conversations, but root questions that then create the conversation what really stands out about that to me is something I, I, I recently read one of your posts on, on LinkedIn, right? And, and it was this whole idea about problem solvers. And one of the last tips that you gave was about creating a tribe. And yeah. so Kathy's idea here to me, so, so much is aligned with that last part. You're creating a tribe of people who are going to use those root questions to have root conversations. So mm -hmm. stick with this idea. I love this consistency of it. Um, I, again, because it's aligned with what you do. I'm loving it, I'm loving it. And thank you, thank you, thank you. So basically you're challenging me to really create a roots community and mm -hmm. a, root, a, a, a roots <laughs> tribe. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's like, it's about got to drunk. go down. <laughs> it, it, it did go down. But uh, so, yes. And then to Kathy's point, um, again, dropping those 
uh, consistent uh, nuggets and questions and, and getting amazing stories and the richness uh, that comes from it and the messiness and the humanness that comes from uh, our roots. And, and, and before you know it, you start realizing that we are a lot more alike than we think. <laughs> Uh, you start hearing these stories and you go, wait a minute, I went through something similar. And then, you know, through empathy and so on, before you know it, you go, wow, this connection is way deeper, right? And so that, that's a really, really good, good approach. Uh, and the social research is definitely something that I'm sticking with. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lou, I just, I kind of want to end it with this, you know, you, uh, you have a lot of really, really great ideas. And I think always the challenge is um, if you really want this one to stick, like give it the, give it the weight, the time, the, the, give it the energy and power that it needs, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. too many, like oh, too many oh. ideas, too many good ideas get lost when there's too many other ideas. So, um, but this is, should be you. I mean, when people talk about you that don't know you, you're the roots and wings guy, right? Um, but if you, like Mark said, if you can create a tribe of people that feel like they belong to that roots and wings community, you won't have to do all the talking. Like they're going to do mm -hmm. it for you. They're going to remind other people to look at their roots and have roots conversations. I freaking love that. And, and, and then, you know, the wings conversation will come, but it is more of a focus on on, on trying to find the connection and how we all connect and what our actual roots actually are. So, yeah, yeah I dig it. I dig it. Mm. Uh, well, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to pay you for this, but thank you for the free coaching. <laughs> you know what? You know what? So I, you I did. appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you did pay us, Lou. You paid us with you your did. time. You, you gave did. us, and you gave us, with your time and your beautiful thoughts. Um, Lou, you're a great presence in this world. You are a great human being in my life and you're a gift to everybody that knows you. And so anybody Appreciate watching, it. you have just been gifted with Lou Raja. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for the love, Mark, man. Truly appreciate connecting. Kathy, oh, truly appreciate connecting. So, Roots and Wings, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Roots and Wings. It. All right, everybody. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing conversation with Lou Roger. Thank you so much, Lou, for dropping your idea with us today. And for anybody out there who wants to learn more about Lou's idea about what Lou brings to the table and what he offers to the world. You can check him out at bemoregivemore.com. The one and only Lou Raja, bemoregivemore.com. And for anybody else out there who would like to drop an idea on the world and have a conversation with Kathy and I about how we can evolve your idea to reach more people, send an email to markandkathy at gmail.com. But you have to spell it right. It's Mark with a C and Kathy with an E. Mark and Kathy at gmail.com. Tune in next time for It's About to Go Down. down. <laughs>